All right, let's go ahead and balance some equations. The first step is draw a line through your arrow to separate your reactants on the left side of the equation. That's what goes into the chemical reaction from what the outcome is, which was called our products. In this case, our product is water. That is what's formed as a result of the chemical reaction between hydrogen and oxygen. By quickly looking at this, you can see the molecular structure here. We don't have enough black atoms, which represent oxygen, okay, in this case, on the right side. So we have to create another or draw another oxygen atom on the right side. So let's do that right now. I'm sorry, a water molecule on the right side. So let's do that now. So we're going to draw another molecule of water. <clears throat> and right away you can see that Yes, our oxygens are balanced. We have two atoms of oxygen on the reactant side and two on the product side, but look what happens when we add an extra molecule. We now have, instead of two atoms of hydrogen, we have four. So on the left side, we have to show that, balance it out by making another molecule of H2. Remember that where the atoms touch represents a chemical bond. So in this case, O2, that means there's two atoms of oxygen touching to make that one molecule of O2. Now, we also have two molecules of H2. So we have to represent these two molecules by adding a coefficient in front of the formula. So I'm going to add a two here because we have two molecules of H2. And if you take two and multiply the coefficient by the subscript, 2 times 2, it tells you you have four total atoms here, okay, of hydrogen. On the product side, we have the two atoms of oxygen, and we have four atoms of hydrogen. So in this case, our, um, react, our coefficient here has to be a 2. And now by adding those coefficients here, that tells us we have a balanced chemical reaction. This reaction will go. It will be able to move along and you'll be able to produce oxygen and hydrogen will be able to make water. So this is the way that we show the law of conservation of mass when we balance chemical equations. So let's just take a look at letter B now. The first thing you want to do is draw a line down your arrow. Identify your reactants and your product or products. Now, you can do it two, one of two ways. You can either draw it out molecularly like this, or you can follow the steps of solving chemical equations by picking, writing out the, the number of elements, uh, atoms of each element on each side of the equation. So and then solving that way. So using numbers instead of uh, a molecular representation. So let's do it here with um, nitrogen and hydrogen. So we're gonna draw, we're gonna list out the atoms of each element and you wanna do them in order on each side of the equation. So because I have nitrogen first, I wanna have nitrogen first on this side. And now we're gonna count up our individual atoms of each element. So here we have two atoms of nitrogen, two atoms of hydrogen. On this side, we have one atom of nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen. So in this case, they're not balanced at all. Like the hydrogen is not balanced and the nitrogen is not balanced. So always start with the more complex molecule. So we want to, want to start balancing, let's say, um, on this side. Because when we change the coefficient and add more molecules of this one, you're affecting not only the nitrogen, but the hydrogen atom total as well. So let's start off by balancing um, the nitrogen atom in this molecule. So instead of having one molecule, we need two molecules. So our coefficient will be two. When we do that, you have to use the distributive property and multiply each of these atoms in this molecule by two. So two times one is two, two times three is six. 
So now our nitrogens are balanced and we're gonna go over to the reactant side and we wanna balance our hydrogen. So what number can we multiply two by to get six? That is our coefficient. So we have to multiply two by three. So three is gonna be written up here as our coefficient for hydrogen. And then we update our numbers. So this is a balanced equation for this particular chemical reaction. All right, um, I wanna show you letter B because this one involves, it's a little more complex. So go ahead and draw your line down the center, list out the atoms of each element. I'm gonna start with this molecule first, which has three different atoms. And I'm gonna list them out separately here. Remember, elements have a capital letter and sometimes they're followed by a lowercase letter. So for example, in this particular molecule, Fe is the element and O is another element. Okay, so um, there was two different elements in this molecule. So let's go back down to here. We have K, O, and H in this molecule. And then we have another molecule that has hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. So because it has hydrogen and oxygen in this molecule, as does this molecule, we want to separate out our oxygen and hydrogen so we don't confuse when we, when we do our counts. Um, so I'm going to add um, sulfur. I'm just going to write the symbol for sulfur here, and I'm going to keep oxygen, this oxygen, in line with this oxygen as I write it out so that I can compare them easily. Same thing with the hydrogen. I'm going to put that hydrogen there. Whatever you write here is what you want to write over here in the same order. That way you can compare your reactants to your products, the numbers. So let's write this out the same way over here before we do our counts. All right. So let's start on the reactant side first. And let's count how many potassium atoms we have in this molecule. Well, if there's not a number there, it means it's one. So we have one potassium, one oxygen atom, and one hydrogen atom. In this molecule, we have two hydrogen, one sulfur, and four oxygen. Let's do the other side. We have two atoms of potassium, one atom of sulfur, four atoms of oxygen, and I'm gonna keep this oxygen over here. We're not gonna write anything here because there's no hydrogen in this molecule. Now let's go over to ox uh, water. We have one atom of oxygen and two atoms of hydrogen. So we're just gonna leave that one by itself. So we have, when we compare, we've got one potassium on the reactant side and two atoms of potassium on the product side. If you look at our oxygens, we have a total of six here and six atoms on this side, so that is balanced. But our, our hydrogens are not balanced either. We've got a total of three on this side and just two over here. So the two that are not balanced are potassium and hydrogen. So we want to look for the molecule that has both of those possibly in the molecule so that when we change the coefficient, we're changing the numbers for both of those atoms at the same time. So I'm gonna look up and see where I can find K and H together, and here it is. So I need to figure out what number can I multiply two by, I'm sorry, what number can I multiply one by to get the same number over here, which is two. So two times one is two, so that means my coefficient is going to be two here. When I put that coefficient there, that changes all of those counts of those atoms in that molecule. Use your distributive property and multiply each of those atoms by two, which will be these three, and update your numbers. Now our potassium is fine. It, it's balanced. We know our sulfur is already balanced. But look what happened to our oxygen. We now have six on this side and five over here. We added another oxygen by adding that mole another molecule of KOH. We also 
increased our hydrogen count to four here. Two plus two is four, but we only have two over here. So our oxygen and our hydrogen are not balanced now. So what molecule up here contains only oxygen and hydrogen? And that would be water. We know we need to get this number to four because we have four hydrogen here. And we also need another water molecule here because we need to get two oxygen. So we're going to put a coefficient of two in front of water. We're going to update our numbers, use the distributive property, multiply the two atoms of hydrogen by two to get four, and then two times one for oxygen is two. Now when we compare our counts, we've got six total hydrogen, excuse me, six total oxygen on the left side and six total oxygen on the right. And we also have the same amount of hydrogen. We have two plus two is four total on this side and four atoms on this side. So this is our balanced equation for this reaction. By adding those coefficients, that tells me that you understand that in order to balance a chemical equation, you need two molecules of KOH, which is potassium hydroxide, added to one molecule of H2SO4, which will yield or produce one molecule of potassium sulfate and two molecules of water. All right, we're going to skip number letter C and we're going to go down to the bottom now and we're going to use this reaction to show that we can draw the molecular representations of a balanced reaction. So there's different ways that you can tackle this. You can either balance it first and then draw them out or draw them out like we did up here first and then balance them. So let's go ahead and draw out the molecules. So nitrogen and hydrogen here. I'm going to use uh, black for nitrogen. And I'm going to use white for hydrogen. So in this molecule, I have one nitrogen for every three hydrogens. Okay. For oxygen, I'm going to use red. So I'm going to draw two atoms of oxygen. Remember the subscript helps you understand that you have two atoms in that molecule of oxygen. Okay. Draw my line, separate my reactants from my products. In this case, we do have two products. We're producing, by this reaction, nitrogen gas, which remember, N is the black atom. So we're going to draw a diatomic molecule of nitrogen, which is N2. And we're going to draw a molecule of water, H2O. Hydrogen is white, oxygen is red, so we'll have one red atom for the oxygen, chemically bonded to two atoms of hydrogen. Okay, so you can see everything's not balanced. <laughs> okay, we've got two oxygen here, one over here, we've got two oxygen. Um, oxygen, I'm sorry, these are oxygen, two oxygen, one oxygen, two hydrogen, three hydrogen, and then we have two nitrogen and, and only one here. So we want to pick, you know, either this one, the NH3 or the H2O first, because it's going to affect more of the atoms than if we just did nitrogen and oxygen. Um, so leave the diatomic molecules for the end. And let's start by balancing out our nitrogen. So we've got one here. We need two. So we're going to draw another molecule of NH3 over here to balance out the nitrogen so far. This is not something that is clean always. This is kind of messy. It can, you can go back and forth sometimes to get the answer. It might take some time, and you might have to erase things. So 
take your time and, and don't get too frustrated over it. <laughs> All right, so in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogen now, but only two over here. So in order to balance out our hydrogen, we have to get six over here. Well, we have two already. That means we need to draw two more molecules of water. Okay, so we balanced our nitrogens. We have two over here, two over on this side. We balanced out our hydrogen atoms. We have six on the left and six on the right. But look what happened to our oxygen. We now have an odd number of atoms on this side and an even number over here. So either way, you want to get your odd numbers to be even because there's no way I can make this an odd number over here because we have a pair. So if I were to draw another diatomic molecule here, I'll have four, right? So if I draw another water molecule over here, I'll have four as well, okay? However, my hydrogen will be affected again. So you want to think, what can we do to get the right amount of numbers of atoms on each side, and you have to go back and forth. So we're gonna start with um, balancing our hydrogen again, okay? By, the reason is because we're gonna, we're gonna add another one over here because we're gonna get four. So we're gonna add a fourth water molecule here. And then we're gonna balance out the diatomic molecule here just to clean that up. Okay, but now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen, and one, two, three, four, five, six on this side. Well, if you're looking at the least common multiple or what you know what we can get to balance this out for the hydrogen, if we have six over here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over here. If we add two more of our water molecules, instead of having eight, we'll have 12, okay? Meaning 12 hydrogen. And over here we have six. So that way we can add two more molecules of NH3 over here to balance out the hydrogen once we draw those two more, All right? So if that doesn't make sense right now, listen and watch. Okay, so we're gonna add two more water molecules, okay, with a total of 12 hydrogen atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Well, we have six over here, so if we draw two more of these molecules, we will balance out those hydrogen finally. So let's do that next. Okay. Now we can clean up our diatomic molecules. We'll go and balance out our nitrogen. We've got four atoms of nitrogen on this side. So we have to add two more atoms here, make another diatomic molecule of nitrogen and two. So to have in one molecule, we'll have two molecules of that on this side. Okay, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then <clears throat> to finish out, we need to draw another diatomic molecule of oxygen because we have six red atoms on this side, but only four over here. So we're going to draw another molecule of O2. And we have finally balanced the equation molecularly. Now we want to show this balanced equation by transferring the amount of molecules down here into our writing it as a coefficient. So remember, the coefficient tells you how many molecules of that element you are uh, either your element or your or, or your um, molecule that you have. So we have four molecules of this 
compound. We have three molecules of this diatomic element. We have two molecules of nitrogen gas, and we have six molecules of water. And that is your balanced equation for this particular chemical reaction.